There was a time in this fair land when the railroad did not run. In the wild majestic mountains stood alone against the sun. Long before the white man and long before the wheel. When the green dark forest was too silent to be real. So it's a great day. Today is day 103 on the Pacific Crest Trail. On day 101, I left the uh, Cracker Barrel store uh, early in the morning. And day 101 and 102 uh, was walking north along one of the borders of Mount Rainier. This is how they used to mark the uh, trail. Instead of putting little signs up that said Pacific Crest Trail, they'd actually cut two holes into uh, a tree along the trail, a smaller hole up on top, and then a larger hole on the bottom. Uh, see them all on the trail, it's just unfortunate. Another example of the old marking system. On the mornings that uh, I depart a town, one of the things I do is I empty a root beer into my drinking bottle. And so for the first couple hours I get a I get to have root beer and it just just a nice little treat, uh, you know, the first day on trail. One of the not so nice things about um, the state of Washington is uh, there's so much moisture in the air that in the mornings everything is covered with dew. And so, you know, at some point during the day, I have to take a break and just lay everything out, dry it off, and repack it. One of the other things that um, I bring with me from town on the first day I'm on trail is a burrito. Um, I pick it up the night before, frozen, and uh, let it thaw overnight. And then for lunch, uh, first day on trail, uh, that's what I eat. Um, yeah, I know it's a, it's one of those frozen burritos and it's cold, but um, on trail, it's it's pretty good. I just entered um, Mount Rainier National Park. The trail runs along uh, one side of the border, so uh, it goes in and out of it um, a number of times.
slept uh, next to Dewey Lake last night and woke up this morning get ready to go and you can see the morning fog unreal the snowy lake Making my way up to uh, Cypress Pass. There's definitely some hills in in Washington. So there's Mount Adams and the and the Goat Rocks. That's where I came from. And walking through here. And then another view. This is wreckage from a obviously a very old plane. Crash landed here quite some time ago right off the PCT. You know, between um, White Pass and Snoqualmie Pass, uh, the terrain along the trail goes from uh, these big expansive views where you can see, you know, for miles and miles and the ridge lines and it's very pretty. And then you go back into walking in the forest, the green tunnel. And it just, combination of the two, back and forth, kind of, I think, defines this part of the trail. Um, both types, uh, really nice and pretty. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd like to see more of the expansive views, to be honest. This is the Mike Urich cabin. That's where I spent the night last night. It's one of about a half a dozen cabins along the Pacific Crest Trail that you can stay at for free. And uh, this is the first one that was at the mile marker I wanted to stay at, so worked out really nice. I'd show you the inside, but there's a bunch of um, uh, hikers sleeping still, so can't do that. So now, today, 103. What's special about today? Well, today's a, a tween day, like most days. Um, but it's the day before I go into uh, town. I'll be going into Sn Snoqualmie Pass and uh, doing a resupply tomorrow. And usually the day before going into town uh, is, is the hardest uh, because... Um, likely running out of food, getting close to it. Um, the day you go into town, you can be out of food. I can be out of food that day, and the sheer thought of what I'm going to eat uh, will sustain me. Uh, but that doesn't work the day before. Uh, so I have to make sure that I keep up my strength and I eat, um, and looking at my food supply and making sure I've got enough. Uh, and then if any contingencies happen, if something happens, I have to be careful that I don't eat too much uh, in case something happens and, and I need to be around longer than I think I need to be. So it's a balancing act on the day before going into town. Uh, the other thing um, that weighs against that is the day before going into town, uh, I want to do as many miles as I can. Um, so that way, 
I can have a shorter day the day I go into town. That leaves more time to do the logistical stuff, laundry, shower, resupply, that sort of thing. And so uh, while trying to eat um, and keep the body going, at the same time, I'm trying to do as many miles as I can uh, to make the next day shorter. Good balancing act. Crossing a lot of gravel roads on this section. Don't know where they all go to, but uh, quite a few of them. I've been watching this uh, all morning as I able to see over the, the ridge lines. Uh, to the east of me, it appears that there is a fire. Uh, there were two, but it looks like the one that was just to the right has subsided but the one uh the prominent one right there um i think it's that's been getting bigger it's not going to affect my my route i don't think it's to the east of me and i should be heading north um but uh yeah just something to watch Now, I'm sure my camera won't do this justice, but it just seems every ridge line have these deep valleys just filled with these gorgeous trees. Pretty spectacular. As I move further and further away from Mount Rainier, these gnarly looking uh, mountains keep getting closer and closer so I think that's what's in store for me for the second half of uh, Washington this spot's going to do for me from White Pass to Snoqualmie Pass is 100 miles uh, I calculated four days uh, 25 miles per day and I carried uh, four days of, of food uh, today, the day before going in Snow Falling Pass, it was a long day, but from the miles that I covered today, um, plus the extra miles I covered the last two days, instead of having to hike 25 miles tomorrow in the Snow Falling Pass, uh, I only have to hike uh, 16. So that puts me in the Snow Falling, you know, early, mid afternoon, uh, allows me time to do all the logistics that I need to do for the next leg of my journey. Uh, now to important matters. Um, every night before I go to bed, um, I have one Hershey bar. Uh, that's my treat. And so this trip uh, was four days, and so I packed four Hershey bars. Um, the issue, you know, of course, I've got now two Hershey bars left over today and tomorrow um but i am going to be in a hotel tomorrow and not in my tent so this extra hershey bar is really not needed um and if you look at it this thing weighs quite a bit i mean it you know that's going to be weighing down my pack all day tomorrow and i don't want to carry that extra weight into town so tonight, <laughs> I get double the love.
I started noticing these wooden blocks with numbers on them screwed down to trees uh, yesterday and uh, I kept seeing them and then I checked gut hooks and uh, did some calculations and it appears that they are actually mile markers um, uh, based on what I've been able to gather they start at the trailhead uh, for Snoqualmie Pass and then they increase in number every mile uh, going south from that that point uh, the highest number I saw where I started to notice them is 33 I don't know how far uh, they go but it's the first time on the trail I've actually seen uh, trail mile markers uh, as you're walking along Making my way down to Snoqualmie Pass, still about four miles out, but you can see the Interstate 90 down there, and you can probably hear the traffic along the freeway. Gut hook says I'm 5.1 miles from the Snoqualmie Pass trailhead. These are pretty accurate. Snoqualmie Pass has a hotel, the Summit Inn, that accepts hiker boxes. Uh, they charge $15 per box uh, if you're not a guest, and it's free for registered uh, guests. Um, the pass also has uh, a couple restaurants, a pizza parlor takeout joint, uh, a uh, microbrewery, a very small grocery store, more like a convenience store, and a convenience store attached to the gas station. Uh, because I had two hiker boxes coming in, uh, I went ahead and paid the little extra money and uh, got the hotel room. Um, a lot of uh, through hikers um, decide to take a zero here because uh, the Snoqualmie Pass is right on the trail. All the conveniences are here. And the pass is situated just shy of the halfway point walking the PCT through the state of Washington. And uh, so that's why they, they decided to stay here. Uh, for me, um, I've got my hiker boxes. Uh, I got a good meal. I did uh, laundry, showered. And so I'm going to be hitting the trail tomorrow morning, heading north to Stevens Pass. I'll see you then. There was a time